Ladies and gentlemen, dear spectators, on behalf of the International Judo Federation, Judo Federation of France, and from all the sponsors, welcome to the final block for the first day of Paris Grand Slam 2022 France. Mesdames et Messieurs, la Fédération Internationale de Judo, la Fédération Française de Judo et l'ensemble de leurs partenaires vous souhaitent la bienvenue sur le bloc final de cette première journée du Paris Grand Slam 2022 France. Rempli, regardez, incroyable rendez-vous. The final block of the first day here at uh, Paris Grand Slam 2022. It's about four months ago that we had the Grand Slam in 2021, and now we are here again. And uh, we have a quite a packed stadium, and it's nice to see all these people enjoying judo, especially here in France. Judo is uh, a big sport here in this country and uh, we will have seven categories today on the first day here. Seven categories and we will start with the bronze medal fights for women under 48 kilograms. There are two tatamis so you can uh, pick the one you want. I am on this one with the commentary together with Annette Bem. Dennis, thank you very much. Hello everyone, welcome. Good afternoon. Ready for the final. And uh, in this bronze medal contest, we have Bafu Dorje from Mongolia, and she will be fighting Katarina Menz from Germany. It's the number 39 and number 30. Well, we saw uh, Blondine Pont for the uh, bronze medal contest. Yeah, it's not uh, Bafu Dorje, it's uh, Pont from France. So she will be fighting for the home crowd. And I know for sure this will give her a bit of extra motivation to win this bronze medal. <laughs> exactly, they have two chances in this category. The other uh, um, chance is from the number one seed this morning, Melanie Legou Clement. She's fighting in the in the other bronze medal contest. Yeah. The two Germanists, Katarina Menz. Had a good day so far to win then in the semi-final against the Mongolian you mentioned uh, then as she lost then now she um, went straight into the bronze medal contest she was a bronze medalist at the European Championships in 2020 saw her a few more times on the world tour but uh, not close to a medal not even in a final block so this is her first uh, moment in oh, a long long time yeah that uh, she gets a chance of meddling and winning a medal in paris that's something special oh, but yeah. then she has to win against Pont from france they have the same age both 23 years young Pont number 39 in the world yeah and she knows how it feels to win a medal in Paris because she was the bronze medalist at the uh, Grand Slam yes. four months ago. So we're going to have four minutes regular time and if there's no score then we're going to have a golden score. Mm -hmm. 
Chimat attempt left sided from Menz. And for both athletes, it's quite easy to get the hip inside because it's a straight left handed to a right handed fighter. So they're standing in a V stance. A Maki Komi attempt uh, in the end. It's the German who put most of the energy in the first minute. Strong Kumikata. The attempt also here from the French fighter with the Uchimata. Broke up early. Sixteen athletes we had in this category. So not too much, but good names in it. Almost half the contest is over. No score, but also no penalties. Both are really trying to, to attack. Not the most precise and uh, powerful attacks. But we have still half the contest to come. Yeah, ended outside. Broke up. Katrina Menz, uh, she was at the Olympics and you know she was always around. So collected points from competition to competition. That was really a good plan and she, ach she achieved her goal to take part at the Olympics in Tokyo. There she had, I think, had just one fight uh, against uh, a woman from Chile, Vargas Le, where she lost. And at the moment, is she the number one in Germany in this category? She belongs to, yeah, to, to the top, Katharina Menz. Well, we are now already in the last minute. None of them able to, to come up with a throw and with a, with a score. The left side again here from Menz. But still got problems to execute her attacks. Yeah, they both want the same. They want to throw the leg in with Uchimata. Yes. And they're doing it like... Then she's doing it, then the French girl is doing it. And that's because it's left to right. And uh, they're both having quite the same style of judo. Yeah, and in this situation, it's, it's, it's good to come up with some combination, you know, also to surprise your opponent to prepare with another attack or go into the other direction. I'm waiting for Ochigari or something yeah. to the... Uh, a throw to the to the backside. Yeah. All right. But after four minutes, we're into golden score. No Shidos on the board, no scores. That shows that these two fighters are really close to each other. And also positive, no uh, penalty so far for being defensive or, or avoiding a grip. It's positive, positive judo. It's Mensu who really tries to get close to her opponent. Her opponent is a 
a bit taller, longer arms, so it's easier for her to keep the distance. Again, Luchimata. Well, you can see that the power has gone now a little bit. <laughs> and it that's not that strange more. after five minutes. Yes. And it's not that they're taking their time. Yeah. That was a good attempt from um, the French girl. And I have the slight impression that she's a bit stronger now in the Kumikata. It's getting more and more easy for her to break the favorite grip of her opponent. Yeah, and also to get more and more control with her right arm. Ooh. I think it was Ari was scored. Yeah. I think it was enough. And also, it was really good to see Pont just at the right moment twisted her uh, her head, that she not roll over her head, but uh, to the side. So it was Ari scored. Yes. So it is Blondine Pont of France. Winning that bronze medal contest. Again, her second uh, Grand Slam medal uh, at a, well, in Paris after winning a bronze medal <laughs> just a few months ago. A second bronze medal she collected today. <laughs> I have the slight impression that these are her parents. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, really happy. <laughs> So some highlights of that fight. Now we're going to see the, the German action. Here you could see the landing on the side. It was enough for Wazari. Rolling over her shoulder, so not over her head. That's uh, not... Uh, you cannot do this, but it's just enough on the shoulder and on the side of her head. That gives her the extra spin. Just enough to throw her opponent for Wazari. So on the first day here in Paris, already a medal for the home country. Yes.
It's the category for a man under 60 kilograms. And we're watching two bronze medal fights. Well, on this tatami, we will have the bronze medal contest between Papanashvili from Georgia and Khuzainov from Azerbaijan. Both well-known names in this category. Yes, both 23 years old. You just could see the difference on the world ranking. World ranking number four, the Aseri fighter, 27, the Georgian fighter. Yeah, Hosainov, of course, had an excellent year. Well, yeah, if it's excellent, because when you go to the Olympic Games, of course, you want to win a medal. But uh, <laughs> there are so many strong athletes in the 60 kilo uh, category. But he won a bronze medal at the Europeans and at the World Judo uh, Championships. So that was uh, really a strong performance. And that's also uh, why he's that high ranked. They know each other, but it's uh, been a while that they fought each other. Yeah.
So uh, in the last few years, a lot have changed, of course. Yeah, the years they were not not uh, not easy. It was uh, Papanashvili um, who surprised me last year, winning a Grand Slam in <laughs> Baku. <laughs> because. Uh, He was a junior world champion but in 2017. Yeah, and uh, here against Hosenov. Hosenov, just the quicker one here, has taken the lead of the Vasari within the first 30 seconds. Yeah, again, looked powerful. I always hated that. <laughs> of course, you want to make a score. Every score counts. But if you score quite early in a fight, Wasari on the board, you know what the other one is going to do. <laughs> he will chase you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and then you look at the board. Oh, man, still 3.30 to go. Yes, absolutely. I agree, Dennis. I, I was the same uh, kind of fighter. If the, the lead is too early, it puts you, puts you so much under pressure not to lose and this is the first wrong word which is in your mind not to lose you know no and now also for Husainov yeah w which plan will he yeah w what will he do now you know you're going to defend a little bit but just this aggressive style in the first uh, 30 seconds uh, well gave him this Wazari score so maybe don't change your tactic it's difficult yeah and uh, he picks up his first uh, penalty already This is a good combination from the U from one side to the other. On one side, the Katakuruma just jumped in with the Seonage on the other side. Yeah, well, that was yep. asking for trouble. Yes. And Papanashvili throws Husainov for Ippon. He jumped in with another shoulder throw. They were so close to each other, and that's where you don't want to be with a Georgian. He had all the time to uh, fight himself out of this situation. Yeah, you see. He realizes oh, now, now. Yeah, he realizes oh. that he really made a big mistake. Yeah. We will see it in replay for sure. There were he had all the time to fight himself out of this situation, but he started like they were so close, beer hog style, and uh, well, sometimes I say the Georgians they are born in this situation. If they can make really close yeah. body contact, eventually you're always the one who's laying on his back in the end. Here he was the shoulder throw, standing up. Here he had all the time to get out of this situation. Yeah. You, see, you can see how we, he really just overtaken the movement. His right leg was right at the, the perfect place here for the coach. Yeah, the coach was good there from uh, Papinashvili. If yeah. you look at the right leg, oh. yeah. and again. Perfect, good control. But the shoulder throw was good enough. If he just had stay, stayed on his knees after this, exactly. there That's would be no problem. <laughs> that but he just mistake. stood up, and that was his mistake. And he, you could see that, uh, well, he knew 
that he made this mistake. So Wazari on the board, but afterwards, losing by Ippon, it's Papenashvili from Georgia who wins this bronze medal here in Paris.
Merci beaucoup et maintenant, 
So we are back in business and uh, we are coming now with the next category, women under 52 kilos. And we're going to watch the bronze medal contest between Chelsea Giles. Thank you. <laughs> She's, uh, yeah, she won a medal at the Olympics, so uh, yeah. that was a really uh, big success for her. But winning a medal here in Paris will be quite hard because she has to fight Shishime from Japan. Yes, there she is. Shishime world ranked as number nine. And, uh, yeah, you can see the red. Yeah, yeah double world champion. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, just to make it clear that in this 52 kilo category in Japan, the level is so high because there's a double world champion. You expect her to fight at the Olympics in Tokyo, but she wasn't there. Yeah. Because it was uh, Abe Uta who won also the gold medal for Japan in this category. There are like four or five athletes from Japan in this category who are capable of winning medals at the highest level. Some even dropped weight to 48 to get a chance. Yeah. Of course, Abe Uta is uh, one of the biggest stars in Japanese judo. But uh, if she's not there, then Shishime <laughs> most of the time is the person who wins the other medals. But she's now not in the final. She lost her semi-final against Bouchard. Of course, the home favorite here, Bouchard, is doing a great job today. And she's in the final later on, so that's a chance for France to win a gold medal. And uh, that's why we see Shishime now fighting for a bronze medal against Chelsea Giles. Yeah, you said it, uh, Dennis, um, Olympic bronze medal. Chelsea won with her 25 years. Medaled twice this year at the Abu Dhabi Grand Slam and the uh, Baku Grand Slam. Silver each time. And number two seed here in this tournament. World number three she is. Giles, for me, really skyrocketed the last maybe one, one and a half year. Before, she was good enough to win medals at the Grand Prix, things like that. But it really started in 2021 mm -hmm. with, uh, uh, of course, uh, the absolutely uh, high, highest thing was the medal at the Olympics. But she really made a giant leap forwards okay. 
Yeah, that was difficult for us to see what actually happened. Because it was a bit too close. But it's quite clear it's left-handed, right-handed fighter. The stronger grip with the arm is from Giles. And uh, Shishime tries to work around this strong arm. She looks the one that puts the most energy in the techniques and the efforts in the standing uh, position. With a little advantage here, Chelsea Charles with the Shido on her side. Half the contest still to come. Good Ashivasa work here from Shishime. Well, I don't know what... <laughs> wrong moment, wrong <laughs> yes, timing. <laughs> wrong timing <laughs> for a close-up. But uh, no score was given. You could see that Giles is so much taller than her opponent. So that's why the right arm is so important for her. She makes... Uh, if she stretches this right arm out, it's really difficult for Shishime to come in with uh, Uchimata or a, a big hip throw. But you cannot just stand there with this right arm all the time. You have to attack yourself. Uh, the Shido is already on the board. Quite good in Ewasa also. I like it to hear the, the coaches, yep. the advices they give to their athletes only during the little break. It is allowed. So keywords are important. Yeah, and that's quite difficult for coaches, to be honest, because sometimes you see during the Tachiwaza, you see things that you want to shout, and sometimes it happens also. And I think it's okay that they're not directly get a warning for it. Yep. So we're on the last minute now. No score so far. A single penalty against the British. Yeah, and I think Giles has quite a good tactic. You can see Shishime is struggling to find an opening. on both lapels right-sided position the long legs from Giles oh, assuming as she attempt here yeah but that's difficult yeah, yeah it's difficult for Shishime because the height difference the gap is just too big for her to feel to come close enough to make contact but now a second Shido for Giles because the tactic is really good, but for herself, she also has to find a way to make an attack. And you know, if you have a really defensive, good tactic, but now with two Shidos in the board, you have to open up. You have to do something yourself, and then you know also that there will be more chances for your opponent to yeah. score. She needed to attack because she was going at the outside, which is penalized. Now she's in trouble. The Mate. referee gives time, but no, no it's Mate. Yeah. Of course, the Japanese women are famous for their neiwaza. They're so strong in their hold downs, building up. When you give them an arm or an elbow, they know how to, like, it's like a game of chess, step by step. Yes. And in the end, you're there in the, in the hold downs. But uh, Giles, also known for, his good, for her good newaza, so she's not scared 
when they're on the ground. But she really has to do something now. I think she's close to the third Shido. Yeah, she really must come first here. Close to the edge. All right, another chance. Maybe her last chance. Mm. She really has to get into her opponent with a score or a technique, Uchimata, something like that. Overhead grip now. On the back. This looks good. Yeah, it looks good, but uh, you see that Shishima also know what is coming. You know, there is no variation from backward. Okay. Chelsea tries always tries to, to throw in front of her with a forward technique. And the defense is, is diffi uh, uh, um, not difficult, it is easy for Shishima. And also with her left arm, where she keeps a little bit of distance, uh, the Japanese. That was the Uchimata again. And was it enough for a score? Yes, there was Ari yeah. on the board. Yeah. So it's Shishime from Japan who wins the bronze medal mm -hmm. with this Uchimata. It took a while, but in the end, Giles just fell on her side. <laughs> Not in a quite traditional way. She had a good grip and the tactic was good, but just the execution and, and the, the attacks were not there and not too dangerous. So, Shishima takes it, the bronze medal in the under 52 kilo category.
right, we are coming to the next category, men under 66 kilos. And we're going to watch the fight between Zaha, Lukas Zaha and uh, Tanaka Ryoma. Zaha from Finland and uh, Tanaka from Japan. A German is also represented in this um, bronze medal contest. The referee, Katarina Marzok. Well, it's not only a new generation of, of, of athletes, also uh, in regard to the um, referees. There are new faces, they had examinations, and we're going to see from time to time new referees who, yeah, we're going to see here on the mat. And in the final block, it is, I think, the best from the preliminaries. Uh, I have the honor to to referee in the final block. All right. So for me, it's not a surprise that Tanaka is fighting for the medals. He uh, was the gold medalist in Paris just a few months ago, and yes. now fighting for the bronze. Saha for me, that's a uh, surprise, but had an excellent day that brought him here in this uh, bronze medal contest. And I must say the Finnish team, they're doing uh, okay. Yeah. I see uh, more and more uh, Fighters getting a bit more stronger, getting closer to medals. But uh, this was uh, a little bit too much asked for Saha. It's <laughs> Tanaka who, after 20 or 23 seconds, already scores an Ippon and wins uh, the bronze medal. Yeah, that was. Quite really fast. Short. Yeah. Yes, first <laughs> attempt, Ippon scored. Yeah. It's Tanaka, the gold medalist from last year, now leaving Paris with a bronze medal.
So 
we're coming to the next category, women under 57 kilos. And we're going to accept here an all-French bronze medal contest. The, the two fighters are... Bogdar from France and Sisik also from France. Yeah. Sarah Leonie Sisik seated as number one here. And you could also see it in the world ranking. She's number number three in the world. Her opponent, Faisa Mokta, is number 26 in the world. So from the paper, it should be clear, but the paper is one thing. Yep, it's true. <laughs> and uh, Mokdar still is a, a youngster, but um, already showed some um, good judo last year with a bronze medal at the Abu Dhabi Grand Slam. Was close to a medal in the Paris with the fifth place. But uh, her best results are still in the juniors with the second place and the third place at the World Championships for juniors. So definitely uh, somebody to watch in the near future. Let's start today. Yeah. Of course, then maybe Sizik will be the favorite in this uh, bronze medal contest. But these are the fights where you can show, well, the coaches, the trainers, uh, the people in the stadium that you're definitely somebody to uh, to look out for. Yeah. French to the Federation really got a brilliant uh, position because two of you said it, two of the young, two young fighters, and even Sarah Leonie uh, Susik, she also is still young. 23, yes, and an uh, Olympic silver medalist. So. They don't need to worry about <laughs> who's coming up here because they have two, at least more than two, a couple of really good fighters. Helene Reservo yes. is also another, she's the number two um, from the paper from the world ranking. Priscilla Kneto and then it's coming Faisa Mokta. Yeah. Let's have a look about the two. Faisa Mokta lost her pool final against Tamaoki, the number two seed here. She's in the final, the Japanese. Mokta then won the rapid charge against Perisic. And uh, Sarah Leonie Susik lost her semi final against the Japanese Funakubo Haruka. Yeah, you never know for sure, but I think these two have fought many battles already in training. Yeah. <laughs> they know each other. That makes it uh, not that easy. Sometimes it's uh, more easy to fight uh, somebody from another country. Yeah. And that's also very often the reason why these uh, kind of comp uh, contests between your, uh, against your teammate, it's not the most uh, exciting and, s and uh, spectacular one, no. because yeah, you know each other so well. And it couldn't be, it couldn't uh, be better to beat your teammate, but it couldn't be also worse to lose against your teammate. It's true. <laughs> yeah. Hanamaki Komi, favorite technique. Nice graphics here from the IGF. Yeah, a little break here, a me medical break. Sarah Leonie Susik will be back in a, in a second. Yes, she's been treated here on the side of the tatami. 
cannot see exactly for what. I think her fingers. But she's back on the tatami. Steps forward, trying to get a grip. Sizik looks very confident. But I think also Magda, who's the younger one. Sometimes the problem, problem is that you have a little bit too much respect, but she really tries to use all the possibilities she has. Just received a penalty. Physically so strong. Sisik. The arm Chance. Lock. Yes. It's out. Yeah. Ipon is given. So it's Sisik who wins with his arm lock. Didn't see Mokda um, tapping, but she did. The referee had a perfect, perfect view. And she takes the bronze medal. Yeah, we will see it maybe in the replay, but we were with this camera view on the other side, so we could not see her tapping. Yeah. But the referee had, well, the best spot. She tried to stand up for a moment, but uh, the arm lock was uh, already complete. Well executed groundwork. Straight out of the Tachiwaza situation. It was Mogdar who was still trying well, to defend against this uh, attack, standing attack, and then uh, forgot about her arm. It was Shiziku. Oh, there we saw the tapping with the right hand. Yeah. Dialect directly straight into the arm lock. Here we have uh, the best view. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. There's the tap. All right. Mr. Ramsey. 
Bye-bye. 
Et maintenant, on a la retour avec les officiels. So, two more categories to come. The men under 73 kilograms and the women under 63. We will start with the men on the 73 in a short while. So the picture is made. The medalists under 66 kilograms. We just heard the Mongolian anthem. And here he is. The man of the day. It's Yondon Pernlai who won his gold medal. Yes, and as one of his teammates, and Ochi uh, 
Uh, Truck Bata is now in the bronze medal contest. We we gonna watch. He is up against uh, Ahadov. Ahadov, exactly. And the gap couldn't be bigger. Sendochir is world ranked as the number two. Ahadov about 180. So. Yes, and it was, it. Yeah, so it was uh, Agedov, that was uh, Pool B, he was the winner of Pool B and that was uh, for me the most interesting pool to watch this uh, whole day because this was a pool with Oruzhov, with Harada, uh, with Gyakova and if you see all those names and it was Benjamin Axus from France who uh, won against Oruzhov and against Harada, he had yes. a big chance of uh, getting into the uh, semi-final but lost against Agadov yeah and, uh, Agadov lost his uh, semi-final against Shavdat Huashvili he is he is he was and he is in a great shape so far when you see and we, we just read all the names and who were in his pool and uh, he bet now a last task for him a difficult task the Olympic bronze medalist and Two times silver world medalist Zendochia of Mongolia. But yeah, that pool, a lot of surprises. Rustam Rushov out in the first round. And uh, in the end, the pool final won by the Uzbek fighter Akhadov Shakram. So let's see who will have the better ending here. No, it look, looked promising, powerful here from the Uzbek fighter. And, uh, well, one of the, no, not one of the reasons, I think the reason why Akhadov is not that high ranked is because he changed his uh, category. Yeah. He was not uh, one of the top fighters in the 66, but still managed to win a few medals, Grand Prix medal. Yeah. Won a gold there and uh, a few bronzes, so it's not that he's completely new Unknown. in the world tour. Yeah. They still get the views a little bit into, into that category and Co collect points, of course. Yeah. And yeah, we did not see him for a yeah. long time. Yeah, exactly. The, uh, last yeah. time we saw him was in Dusseldorf in 2020. But better not to underrate him. For, for, for short, Saint Ocho is not doing that. No, and uh, if he does it, then uh, he knows that he doesn't have to do it now because it's uh, Akhadov who shows uh, some really strength, but he has to do that this as well because there are already two Shidos on the board for him. So he knows what he has to do. His coach, Iliades, former Olympic champion for Greece, Doing a good job in Uzbekistan, mm -hmm. but uh, especially with the higher categories, especially the 90s, 81s, but also in the lighter categories, Uzbekistan has uh, some promising athletes. Yeah. To mention Davlat Bobonov. Yeah, Bobonov. Olympic yes. medalist. Bro uh, bronze yeah, one medalist. of the lighter ones is, I think, Lutfi Laev. I really en yes. enjoy him uh, fighting really strong. <laughs> I think he's 60 kilos. Two penalties already against Akhadov. A minute 20. And one penalty against the Mongolian. Hey. Left against left, Kozoto. 
the attempt from Sendorje, the turnover. Does he got a chance there on the ground to get on the arm? No. 50 seconds. And no escape anymore for Akhadov with the two Shidos on the board. He has to attack. He has to show the referee that he wants to score, wants to win this fight, wants to make attacks. Extreme control from the sleeve. Central Chier is holding the left arm of uh, Agadov really close. There's uh, some changes in the rules, of course. They get more time for the Kumikata again. But then you also have to do something with it. You cannot just control an arm, just hold it like that and don't attack. All right, so we're going to go into the golden score. And this should motivate you because you know one last big attack. And that's it. Left arm from Akharov is a little bit low and Sendocha used that for a low attack. Yeah, the arm was, was too low on the lapel, and uh, but he could not all get it higher because the enormous pressure of Sendocha on his uh, sleeve. It's quite difficult uh, for Agadov then to launch an attack. Uchi, ooh, turned him. That was quite a spectacular twist. Yeah. From the Ochigari from the Mongolian. <laughs> and then uh, the Uzbek twisted. But there was no real control. Again, shoulder throw for the Mongolian, so Akhadov now really has to make an attack. Again, Again uh, yeah, same movement, huh? Yeah. Well, I think it's over. Yeah. It will be Tsentoch here who will, will, who will win this uh, bronze medal. <laughs> yeah, okay. Also coach coach Iliadis realizes. realizes. Yes, here it is. It's he the he third just Shido. went under the ground without a grip. So it looked desperate. You saw it. Yeah. And that's the rule. But still a great fight. A great fight. And. Uh, St. Ocho really had his difficulties. Yes, but uh, leaves Paris with a bronze medal and he's happy with it. Yeah. Had to work hard for it today. Yeah. But another medal for him.
ladies and gentlemen, the winner and gold medalist for men under 73 kilogram category in white judo gi representing Georgia, Lasha Shoutabushvili. Congratulations, this is the first gold medal in Paris Grand Slam for Lasha Shoutabushvili, Georgia. And the silver medalist in this category, Hashimoto Soichi, Japan. And the Valentine de cette finale, Stavros de France. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the medal ceremony for the women's under 57 kilogram category. Ceremony, remise de récompense, category féminine, moins de 57 kilos. The medals will be presented by the chairman of board of Yuxalil Group, Mr. Yavuz Yuxalil. Bronze medalists are representing France, Sarah Leone Sizig. Gisela Nieto. Silver medalist representing Japan, Tanoki Momo. And gold medalist representing Japan, Murakumo Haruka. Gentlemen, please rise for the national anthem of Japan. Mesdames et messieurs, veuillez vous lever pour l'hymne national du Japon. Maintenant, la photo avec les officiels. That brings us to the last category of the first day here in Paris at the Grand Slam.
It's the category for women under 63 kilograms. And uh, the bronze medal contest we will be seeing on this tatami will be a touch contest. The referee, Mathieu Bataille, is refereeing this bronze medal contest. And it's Sonne Vermeer against Geke van den Berg. There they are. We spoke about it, about it. It's always something special to fight against your teammate. And for sure, both know each other very well. Yeah, it's no fun. You're training every day to become, well, whatever you want, but world champion, Olympic champion, European champion, whatever you want to achieve. And then you go to Paris to meet other opponents, and then you have to fight somebody from your own country. Yeah. But uh, at this moment, uh, Sonne Vermeer is the number one in Holland. So for her, maybe a bit more pressure mm. than uh, Geke van den Berg. For her, it's well, a chance to show the world that uh, well, that, well, that it's possible for her also to uh, be the number one. In a competition, they met already one time. Um, okay, we, wo we, we won't count the, the many rendezvous they did <laughs> at no, home, but... Uh, I think from near won, won that one. Or yeah. Yeah. And it was 2019, yeah. Already. The Grand Prix in Triple C. Some time ago. Both Judica pick up their first penalty. For me, it was Vermeer who looked a bit stronger in the Kumikata, but without any attempts. This is the first Seonage attempt for her. Can she close her leg? No. Was a point where it was close to. Son is the younger one, three years younger, 23 years. Ranked as number eight in the world. And, uh, already won a, a lot of medals. Mm -hmm. She was our uh, cadet world champion junior world champion and uh, last year she won a bronze medal at the world championships for seniors oh that looks promising that's a good shoulder throw was already yeah. on the board absolutely score the lead here for for Mayer. very consistent this left-sided low attack. Yeah, and if you see the progress Vermeer made, and she's still young, 23, I think um, in the next two and a half years, she's definitely one of the fighters that, in my opinion, is capable of uh, winning a medal at the Olympics could be if she continues the progress. Yeah. She did not compete last year, and this is a really nice attack. Yeah. So it's quite clear it's Sonne Vermeer who wins this fight against her uh, teammate. 
with two Vasaris. And she wins a bronze medal here in Paris. Her fourth medal at a Grand Slam. Van der Berg had a good day. Mm -hmm. Showed some good judo mm -hmm. today, but uh, here in this uh, bronze medal contest, just came a little bit too short against Sanne Vermeer. So that, that's it for us for today. For today, yes. There will be one more final. Um, and we will see you tomorrow. Tomorrow morning, we start yeah. again Absol with the heavyweights. Absolutely, day two here at uh, Paris Grand Slam. Dennis Van Aguis was a pleasure. And uh, hopefully see you tomorrow, uh, you at home, for the final block at day two. Bye-bye for now. Bye.